Well, joining me now from Tehran is Sadiq Zibakala. He is a professor of Iranian studies at Tehran University. So good to have you on the program. What are these protests really about? There are economic reasons. There are political reasons. There are social reasons um, behind these uh, uh, protests. And uh, these, all of these problems are, uh, are uh, very serious. Let us, uh, for example, uh, look upon the economic reasons. Iranian uh, currency, real, has uh, fallen dramatically uh, during the past uh, four months. Uh, and, uh, and given the fact that uh, there are many items uh, which are imported uh, from, uh, from abroad, either in the form of uh, machinery, tools, uh, equipment, uh, chemical, raw material, you could imagine that uh, with the increasing uh, value of uh, foreign currency, um, those people who are economically uh, involved in uh, producing all sorts of uh, items, uh, they found it very difficult. Uh, they, 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 right. they, they can't sell, they can't buy because of uncertainty right. in the market. Tell me what you think of the government's response so far. Well, many people uh, were waiting uh, for uh, uh, Mr. Rouhani, the president, um, to to uh, to address the nation, which is uh, what he did uh, about 48 hours ago, and unfortunately, it simply added salt uh, to the injury because uh, he was talking to he was addressing the nation in a manner that, um, that although people who were watching him talking, they were uh, school children that uh, would, be, would be excited, would become hopeful, would become cheerful. But um, what the president is saying, he escaped um, from uh, addressing real issues, real problems, and simply keep uh, stating that uh, we have to be ho hopeful, we have to cooperate with each other, people with the government, government with the people, et cetera, et cetera. And it, 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 it simply made people more frustrated and more angry uh, from uh, the, the president. Yeah, and help me understand one more thing. There were reports of anti-US chants there were reports of anti-Rohani chants, anti-Khamenei chants, even anti-Palestinian chants, all sorts of different slogans and chants within multiple protests. What's going on? Is it a medley of all different types well, of people? Uh, Iranians, uh, we do not have anything against Palestinian. We do not have anything against um, the, the Lebanese, uh, the Shiite Lebanese. We do not have any, anything against uh, Syrian. We are sorry, we are sad because uh, people in Syria are, are suffering. But the point is that, rightly or wrongly, uh, there is a feeling uh, amongst many Iranians uh, that uh, for the Islamic government, Palestinian, uh, the Palestinian who, who, who are uh, close to the Iranian uh, Islamic Republic way of thinking are more important. Shiite Lebanese are more important. Right. Syrian people are more important than Iranian people. That's why whenever they find opportunity, uh, they shout and they give slogans that uh, the, the, the think about us, not about Syrian people. Think about us, not the Palestinian. Think about us, not um, the Shiite Lebanese. Right. Fascinating. And we're going to talk a bit more about that in a few moments. But for the moment, Sadek Ziba Kalam, I thank you very much for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Let's bring in two new guests now. In California, we have Abbas Milani. He's director of the Iranian Studies Program at Stanford University. And in Tehran, we have Mohammed Marandi. He's a professor at Tehran University. Gentlemen, a pleasure having both of you on the program. Mohammed Marandi, let me begin with you. We heard from Sadek Ziba Kalam earlier on. He felt that 
Hassan Rouhani is deflecting. He's rubbing salt into the wounds of the protesters by not quite tackling the issues. Is that how you see it? No, definitely uh, not. I don't agree at all with Mr. Ziba Kalam. First of all, with regards to Syria, according to polls carried out by the University of Maryland, uh, the Iranians have consistently, over the past few years, supported Iranian policy on Syria and Iraq because the Iranians know that if the black flags were raised in Damascus and Baghdad, that would be a catastrophe, not for only just for the region, but for Iranians themselves. And uh, with regards to Iran's military expenditure, according to the International Institute for Strategic Studies, uh, in 2017, Iran spent less on its military than did Turkey, uh, the Israeli regime, Saudi Arabia, uh, and the United Arab Emirates, and Iraq. So Iran spends less money on its military than even a small country like the Emirates in this part of the world. So these are exaggerations. There is discontent in Iran. The economic problems are difficult. But I think that most Iranians recognize that the United States is engaging in warfare against the Iranian people. And I think it's a bit disingenuous for right. someone not to point this out. Okay. So while there is dissatisfaction with, some of, with uh, the problems that the right. uh, administration is facing currently, and uh, the fall of the Iran or the fall of the Iranian real, uh, I think that uh, people do also recognize that Trump is doing his best to, as he puts it, uh, to strangle the Iranian people. Okay, so Abbas Milani, we heard two very different perspectives with regards to this. We had Mr. Ziba Kalam earlier on trying to explain that some of those people on the streets are saying, "Hey, why is our money going towards the Syrian cause or the Palestinian cause or?" to the Lebanese cause uh, with Iranians' geopolitical interests. We have Mr. Marandi saying, actually, that's just not true. Yes, there's financial discontent. And if you want to blame anyone, it's the United States strangling the Iranian economy. Where do you stand on this, Abbas Milani? Well, I, I think the problems of the Iranian economy are exacerbated by Mr. Trump's uh, politics and by the decision to reimpose sanctions. But they are only augmented the problems of the Iranian economy is a corrupt, cronious system uh, that has plundered the country's uh, water resources, uh, cap uh, social capital, financial capital. Uh, it has lost the ability to export. Uh, it has faced the country with double-digit inflation, double-digit unemployment for almost 37 years. A great part of the economy is in the hands of these extra uh, legal institutions, like those connected to Mr. Khamenei's office, connected to the IRGC, connected to uh, the religious foundations. Often they don't pay taxes, they don't play by the rules. And that has created a perfect storm. And it is in that perfect storm, in that corrupt, incompetent uh, regime and economy uh, filled with despair, that Mr. Trump is trying to bring about more pressure with the idea, I think, eventually of bringing about the regime change. I'm right. very sorry for the Iranian people. Mohammed Maradi, it's a corrupt, cronyist system. The rot comes from within, not from without. What do you think? Well, we've been hearing that sort of thing from people like your guests uh, in the United States for the last four decades. Uh, for the last four decades, it has been a corrupt regime, as they like to call it, collapsing. And the irony, of course, is that they, uh, they always uh, put forward this paradox in that e Iran is utterly corrupt. It's collapsing. It's unpopular. Of course, the turnout for elections in Iran are phenomenal. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, it's a growing menace. It's a threat to the world. You can't have your cake and eat it as well. Iran is not, the, the sanctions against Iran that Trump is imposing are intense and severe and quite barbaric, but they're not new. Obama was pursuing crippling sanctions for years. And even after Iran signed the JCPOA, the nuclear deal, the United States continued to violate the agreement. And during the three years before Trump exited the agreement, the Iranians were never able to access the international banking system. 
And this issue about cronyism and so on and so forth, you can say the same thing about the oligarchy that now exists in the United States and the Occupy Wall Street movement that we had years ago and the imbalances in the United States, the collapse of the middle class. The Iranian economy is facing problems at home. A large part of it is because of sanctions, and a large part of it is because of the problems that all countries face. But Iran has a major disadvantage, and it has the most powerful country in the world attacking it. And instead of attacking Iran, your guest should be criticizing the United States. Abbas Milani? Well, first of all, I, I don't need lessons from Mr. Marandi about who I should criticize. Uh, I, I have criticized the Trump administration. If he had read what I have written, I think he you would do. know that I, uh, I, I do criticize it. Uh, and uh, I would be uh, a little more polite and wait for I, the time I finish before you enter the discussion. Uh, the problems of Iran are the problems of the Iranian regime. They have been uh, uh, created, they have been added to these problems because of the sanctions. But let's take the, the issue of the nuclear deal. When Rouhani signed the nuclear deal, uh, Mr. Khamenei, uh, as a despotic leader, decided unilaterally that he was not going to allow normalized relations with the United States. He declared categorically that he was not going to allow direct negotiations between uh, Rouhani and Obama. And they waited and they waited. They wasted two and a half, almost two years during the Obama administration till they got to Trump. Uh, and part of uh, the, their inability to cash in on uh, the results of the nuclear deal was precisely the policies that the regime pursued. The Iranian diaspora, for example, is very, very capable of helping Iran solve some of its economic problems. The judiciary that is corrupt to the core and is a direct tool of Mr. Khamenei and parts of the IRGC has made every effort to make it impossible for the diaspora to go back to Iran and con help contribute, solve this problem. What happened to uh, someone who went from England, tried to solve the water problems in Iran is just one example. The right. number of people who okay. are now arrested. Okay, uh, let's get so a response. Okay, Professor Morandi. I think it's quite insulting for uh, your guests to speak of all these Iranian academics and intellectuals and educated people at top-notch universities in Iran and in different institutions who are quite capable of solving the country's problem. They don't need people who necessa are necessarily fluent in English or who are in the United States to tell them how to run the country. They're quite competent and smart themselves. If the United States and countries like the United States were not trying to uh, destroy Iran and to destroy the Iranian com uh, economy, uh, Obama called it crippling sanctions. What, it, what did that mean? It meant to, to cripple the Iranian people. That is barbaric. Instead of giving this caricature of Iranian life and society, which is, by the way, a, a disservice to the Iranian people, because what people in the United States who are actually, I don't know about your guest, uh, your current guest, but about many of these people who are critical of the United States. By constantly producing this caricature of Iran, an evil regime that, uh, that ha it is completely unpopular, they simply encourage Trump to put more pressure because people like Trump, Trump mistakenly think that they can, through pressure, get, uh, bring down the Islamic Republic. But let me give you just one example that would uh, dismantle uh, the notion that the gentleman put forward. And that is that after the nuclear agreement, which was accepted by the Islamic Republic, including the leader, while the, actually while the deal was being negotiated, Ayatollah Khamenei said in a public speech that if the United States were to implement the nuclear agreement faithfully and honorably, then we could start negotiating on other issues. But your, your guests in the United States and others, they erase this reality okay. from the okay. equation. Fair point, fair point. From day one, right. Obama began violating the agreement. And Trump pulled he out. He passed new sanctions. 30. He passed the uh, yeah. Iran Sanctions Act, right. limit, the visa restriction right. laws. They were not faithful to the agreement. Okay, and then Trump pulled out. Abbas Milani, people are still protesting. 
Traders, merchants, shopkeepers and others, young people, old people, what needs to happen now to satisfy the Iranian people, to get them back to work and to grow the economy? I think what needs to happen, uh, first of all, I, I must say that I did not say that there aren't people in Iran who could solve uh, Iran's problems. They might not include Mr. Marandi, but there are many, many top scholars, uh, top scientists who are trying to work. <laughs> you are the indeed the in polite one, aren't you? Yes, I am. I, I, uh, uh, I talk in the same spirit <laughs> as you do. Uh, but uh, I, I never have said that <laughs> Iran not capable of solving these problems. Uh, Iran is a very rich country. Iran has one of the richest intellectual capitals of any country in the Middle East. Uh, but the Iranian, now 10% of the Iran's population almost live outside. And they have a share the, in determining the future of Iran. That's the only thing that I would suggest. And I think the only thing that is going to solve the economic, social, cultural, political, crisis that the Iranian society, Iranian, Iran as a culture, Iran as a country faces, uh, the only solution to it is a kind of a national reconciliation, okay. a kind of national recognition that everyone must contribute and the recognition that the current leadership has brought the country to okay. the verge of uh, collapse. Okay, well, bring in the diaspora, says Abbas Milani. I wish we could continue. We cannot because I have to move on, but I... I found that I very I would like absorbing. to just give one Okay, go, one very point. quickly. 20 seconds, please, sir. Very quickly. First of all, 10% of the Iranian population is not outside the country. Like the other information, it's quite warped. Look at US, uh, the U.S. census, and you'll find out that that's a huge exaggeration. Uh, but uh, the Iranian, there are many problems in Iran. But at the end of the day, this narrative has been going on. This discourse has been going on for four decades. And the international community is being misled by this. And this only encourages, encourages the likes of Trump. Iran is one of the few countries in this region that has elections, and our president is elected by the people, and uh, so are other arms of the state, either directly or indirectly. Okay. And that is something that people should um, appreciate. Okay, and I appreciate you both taking the time to talk to us on the newsmakers, Abbas Milani and Mohammed Marandi. Thanks again.